Hello and welcome to an odd back to school night because we're not really back to school. We're not in the building. We are teaching from home in many cases, although some of us are teaching from our classrooms. Doesn't much matter because your students are at home. They're at home, I'm at home. This is my red brick schoolhouse that I am doing most of my lessons in this start to the 2020-2021 school year. So let me explain to you how we're going to be going through the process of instructing your children, how we would like them to learn, and the sort of subjects I teach. So your child is in my class for physics. Very challenging class, and there's a lot of hands-on feeling when you're dealing with physics which unfortunately we're not going to be able to deal with just yet, but with luck we'll be back in the building, back in room one, back going up and down the hallways and all the other silly stuff that I tend to do to get a good feeling for the material. So what are we talking about with physics? Well, it's obviously all of this stuff, and we're not going to get to all of this stuff, but physics basically is a way to explain nature to come up with a description of what is happening and why it is happening. It's really quite fascinating whether you're dealing with things that are on the planet or things that are on other planets, out in the cosmos. Physics helps to describe all of it. And it's a very fascinating story, how this came about, above and beyond just the theories themselves. So when we're going through these, I like to try to get a little bit of stories through it as well. What I really want more than anything else from your students is curiosity. I want to make sure that they can not only understand it, but understand the simplicity and be able to explain it themselves. That's when they really understand the material. The material itself that I'm going to be posting all year long, but especially pertinent now, is going to be on Google Classroom, whether it's CP Physics or Honors Physics. And the assignments are going to be right on here. I sent invitations to all of you, so please sign on. You can get weekly updates. You can get information through Classroom quite easily. It's a little bit smoother than getting the information through Genesis. Those are the actual grades that are posted, so it's still important, but you get more of an idea of the assignments on here. We have two textbooks that we utilize for honors physics in CP physics. I just use a conceptual. I just use this for a lot of the problem solving. I might do one or two in the CP, but mainly the honors class is going to be dealing with the other uh, textbook. How we're learning, though, is not going to be strictly through the textbook. I have plenty of other sheets of paper that I hand out, formative worksheets, formative assessment worksheets, what I call CDs, which are conceptual development worksheets, simple drawings explaining a situation and going through the process of what that means, problem solving, different examples that are there. We have labs that are going to be a little bit trickier, but we're going to try to do as many as we can that they can use handheld stuff and move their own ping pong balls around, do plenty of other hands-on items like that. But some of this stuff does kind of need to be demonstrated. And that is something else that I do. And here's a quick little video on how that is going to take place. So physics is all about the observations of the world around you. That's kind of the key behind it. So how do we do a lab when they're not actually in class and are observing the things around them? Well, sometimes I can sort of have them play with stuff at home, which is what's going to happen a lot. And other times there are things I'm just going to have to show them. Now, some things are a little bit tricky. For instance, if I want to explain what a Newton is as far as a force, I have the force gauge and I hand them out and they put different weights on it. They just pull it and they get a good feeling for what this force really means. Because that's not something normally anyone is understanding. There's not a Newton that is common language. So this is very helpful. And I can't do that because they don't have these. But I can get something close with a rubber band. Having a rubber band, having two rubber bands, just getting a good feeling for what's going on with that. Another thing we can do is talk about something that seems sensible, but put a little twist on it. For instance, I have a beaker full of regular beans and I have a ball bearing or a ball from a ball bearing. I put this in top 
and it sits there because it's on a solid, but if I start shaking it, not surprisingly, it drops down to the bottom. After all, the idea is that it is heavier than the beans that are in here. And if I get something that is lighter than the beans, like a ping pong ball, I can shake all I want. It's not going anywhere. That's not a surprise. So to put in a little twist, if I put this down at the bottom and shake it, that's what it seems to be a bit of a surprise and a little bit of magic when I just draw it up. Another neat little trick, I have this little device here. This will shoot another ball off to the side and drop this at the same time. Now, most people are going to think if this is being pushed to the side, it has a longer journey, it has extra force, it's going to take longer to land, whereas this will land quicker. And yet, when we actually do it, this will be a little noisy, so bear with it. They both land at the same time. And that's one of the other things we talk about with Newton's laws. Very neat stuff. When we start to advance a little bit, we start to play with things like lasers. And that's something like this little experiment. So here we have a laser. Not a blow up the Death Star laser, but a laser. It's going to pass in the same way we'd expect it to. But you start getting some curves and you start getting different movements along the same glass. Want to make it a little more interesting? You can get a crisscross. And that's this type of lens. There's also this type of lens. Now you don't expect it to twist, twist inward like this and have the light twist outward, but that's what it does. You want to straighten it out again? Put the two together, you pretty much have it done. So we talk about the propagation of light, how it works the way that it does, and explain how the motion through different objects can affect the path of light itself. So that's the plan. This is what your child is going to be hopefully learning and how they're going to be learning it this year. I think physics is a fantastic field of study. It explains so much. It even explains things that they've had before. I would like to have physics taught right off the beginning, but a lot of the math gets a little bit tricky. Regardless, this is a good way to explain the laws of nature and how things link together. And I hope that they are able to see these laws of nature more clearly out in the real world when they're done. Thank you for your time. And if I can give you any more insight, or if you can give me any insight as to what works best with your child, I am very happy to hear it. But I appreciate your time, and I do hope that we get to see each other in person at some point in time this year.